All right, we've got a quick video on synaptic transmission. Synaptic transmission is what happens in between uh, two nerve cells. So it's the connection between the axon terminal and the dendrite of the next uh, actual neuron or nerve cell. So if this is one nerve cell, these are the dendrites up here, the dendrites up here, oops, which are uh, receiving signals from other nerve cells in fact from the axon terminals of other nerve cells and here we have a, uh, a nerve cell which would be called a uh, an effector an effector neuron and what this neuron actually does is it's sending its message directly to a actual muscle or some kind of hormone glands or something like that to secrete those hormones so when we're looking at this diagram here uh, that's what we're looking at so here is an axon terminal that's the end the end of a nerve cell and then at the other end right here there's a little gap in between and this is the dendrite of the next of an adjacent neuron so there's a lot of stuff that goes on here and this is actually really interesting here today it's just going to be the very basics of it but actually when we talk about um, in the neurobiology unit when we actually talk about drugs and how drugs produce their effects, one of the main things is that what, how they interact with this little gap right here, this gap called the synapse or synaptic cleft. Um, so what's happening here? So you have to have a strong understanding of how the action potential gets transmitted and it's tr getting transmitted along the axon here. And if you remember, it's sodium ions rushing in, potassium ions rushing out. When sodium ions rush in, it's called depolarization. When the potassium ions rush out, that's called repolarization. And that's going to change the overall um, the potential difference, uh, which is measured in millivolts. Okay, From negative 70, it's going to jump up to plus positive 30 millivolts. Anyways, so step one here, the nerve impulse is going to reach the nerve impulse coming down here. So this wave this propagation, this wave of sodium rushing in is coming down here, okay? It's not going backwards, and we talked about why. So it's coming down this way. So the nerve impulse is going to reach the end of this presynaptic neuron. Presynaptic neuron just means this is part of the neuron that's before the synapse, hence presynaptic neuron. Once the nerve impulse reaches this end here, the synaptic knob, or the end of the presynaptic neuron, or the axon terminal, there's a lot of synonyms here, so be careful. When it reaches there, uh, calcium ions will start to diffuse in through calcium channels. So uh, calcium plays a big role in nerve cell, proper functioning of nerve cells. So previously you've known calcium to be important for uh, healthy teeth, and bones, I learned that through a lot of commercials in America saying drink milk, blah, 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 all this stuff. But actually, uh, now you should know that calcium ions are important for helping with synaptic transmission. So the calcium ions are going to diffuse in to the axon terminal end. And when that happens, that allows vesicles containing neurotransmitters. So vesicles are, remember, it sounds like vehicles. So vesicles contain little chemicals in there. Neurotransmitters. Think of this as a little car, and the whole point of this car is to drive up to here and to release the contents. So this cloud of contents is in here. These are the important chemicals that have to go across. So uh, anyways, let's get this down and go back and, and recap. So vesicles containing neurotransmitter. So it's some kind of substance related to uh, neurons. It's being transmitted across this gap. And uh, so these vesicles are moving towards here. They're going to fuse with the cell membrane of the axon terminal. This is an example of exocytosis. And then the neurotransmitters get released. So neurotransmitters, here we are in step four. They get released and they diffuse across the synaptic cleft or the synaptic gap or the synapse, all, all different synonyms for the same thing. And they're going to bind to receptors over here. And once it binds to receptors, then pretty much what happens on this side is the exact same thing as what was happening over here. Then all of a sudden, binding here, binding to these receptors causes some kind of chain reaction to happen, a, me a metabolic pathway, and then you end up with sodium ions rushing in through sodium channels. That's the exact same thing that was happening here all along the axon. Sodium channels open, and then sodium ions rush in. 
Guess what? Once sodium ions rush in, that changes the potential difference, and then potassium ions are going to rush out. Then they're going to reset using the sodium-potassium pump, if you recall one of the previous lessons, and then the uh, message continues down here. Okay, so the nerve impulse continues to propagate along the postsynaptic neuron. Finally, everything gets reset. Calcium is pumped, so it's in here. It gets pumped back out. ATP is required. Neurotransmitter gets broken down. Some of it gets just uh, broken down with enzymes, or some of it gets reabsorbed back into vesicles. So it's like everything resetting. So we talked about this with uh, the sodium going in and potassium going out. Afterwards, everything gets reset to allow the next message to get passed. So a lot of resetting is actually happening here as well. Um, those are the basics of synaptic transmission. Just to give you a, a preview, so what happens if when, when drugs are involved here? Well, if this gets stimulated as a result of these, these neurotransmitters passing and uh, binding to the re receptors, what certain drugs can do is they can actually, they have different effects, so you can kind of predict the effect of a drug. If a drug acts like a neurotransmitter and binds here and makes more action potentials, then that drug would be somewhat of a stimulant. If the drug comes in here and it actually blocks the receptors, so the neurotransmitter can't actually bind, then that's not a stimulant. It's actually preventing this thing from getting fired. And so you have some a drug such as a depressant. Um, I've kind of simplified everything, but if you take THC and marijuana, if you take nicotine, if you consider alcohol, if you consider cocaine or speed methamphetamines, most of them are affecting what's happening in the synapses. And if you imagine that you have uh, billions of these synaptic gaps in your brain alone and how the chemicals can affect that, you can kind of understand preliminarily, how, preliminarily, oh my gosh, you can kind of understand how that could mess with your brain. So I guess the message is don't do drugs. All right, post any questions that you have. Is there anything else to show? I think we are good. All right.